Now to running, and barefoot running has been increasingly unpopular over recent years. This is all based on a book, Born to Run, that described how certain tribes in South America could run for miles and miles barefoot. Manufacturers have come up with glove-style shoes that allow you to feel like you're running barefoot. But the big problem is that if you get rid of the runners, you have to change the way you run. Otherwise, you could be in for trouble. Dr Andy Franklin Miller joins me now. Andy, thank you very much for coming in this morning. D tell us about this book and the whole barefoot running drive. How did it all begin? Oh, look, well, Chris McDougall was, was suffering from injury, and so he had a real problem with his Achilles tendon and was struggling. This is the on, author of the, the book, Chris McDougall, book. yes. And so he was struggling on with his Achilles tendon and had seen various specialists trying to fix it and really had not made any real progress and came across a, myth, a mythical, almost near mythical tribe who were apparently running injury free for many years. He sought them down and spent some time with them and learnt really a lot from what they were doing. And what they were doing was really running with a very minimal um, layer of sole between their foot and the ground. And so he took that concept, adopted it, and really started what is now a barefoot running craze. Yeah, it's very persuasive, that book. When you're reading it, you're like, oh, that sounds like a great idea, well, doesn't absolutely. it? It's something that you know, we all want everyone to do. We want people to go running, we want people to be healthy. Yeah, and they're um, running like hundreds of kilometres. No problem at all, this tribe. They are. And you know, over time, they've adapted. They're like, you know, they spend their time barefoot regardless. And so, as many tribes in Africa would spend their, their, their time barefoot. So they're not used to wearing shoes, and they're not in an urban environment, and they're not in an environment where really footwear, we've evolved to wear footwear um, for various reasons. So what are the problems then when we tried out the barefoot running? You, ha you have one of these barefoot shoes. We do. There, so so this, is a, this is a typical example of a barefoot running shoe. So you can see there's very little in it um, in between you and the ground. They're very flexible and there's a lot of rotation in it. So it's really like running with a little layer of protection for skin. And look, the, the problems we see at the sports surgery clinic really are patients who would present with injury. Well, um, we actually, we have a video of somebody running in these we shoes, do. don't yeah, we? We take absolutely. a look at that um, piece of video. And so a lot of the problem, now this isn't with those shoes, actually, this is, this is really a good okay. way of running. This is with a, a shoe with a very mid-foot landing, as you see there, with, with good running form. And really the focus here is not so much about what's on the foot, it's really about how you run. And so he's landing on his heel, really, no, is he? No, he's landing in the middle of the foot there, you can see. Oh, so really? the foot lands flat, the first bit of contact. The shin's very vertical. And, um, and there's a lot of movement of the hip. So and that's so, how you should run, is it? That's how you should run. What about in these shoes? Look, in these shoes, it t it's very difficult if you're running for the first time to run like that. It, they tend to bring you very much onto your toe. So you land on the forefoot. Now, we're not adapted to run that way. And no, that would be a strange way of running. Yeah. I think we do have some video of that, I think. We now do. We'll have a look at this. Um, and look, there and we so go. there we go. Difficult to see there a little bit because of the background, but landing on the toes there yeah. puts a lot of load on the back of the ankle, back of the Achilles, but particularly in terms of the, the bones in the foot. Look, only yesterday I saw two patients with stress fractures in the second toe um, because really? of changing their technique in conjunction with a shoe. And so they've been working on a four-foot running style, and many of the running styles out there promote a four-foot running method. Um, and this isn't about a method of running. This is about good mechanics and learning to run in a very mechanically efficient way. So you are seeing problems because people have decided to adopt this barefoot running technique and they're yep, not sure, able to do sure. it. Yeah, sure, for sure. Typically right. we'd see two or three patients a day. Um, every day, really? Every day. And so we run a specialist running clinic looking at running injuries where we take some of that whole body treadmill view. We're not looking at the foot and the shoe interface. We're really looking at how the whole mechanics work. But we'd see up to eight patients a day at the moment in that clinic looking at runners, really trying to change the way they run. And Andy, you know, how important is it which shoe you decide to use? I mean, anything from that kind of glove type shoe there right up to the big supported shoe. Sure, so you we've have got there, a, we've got a one. typical shoe that many people will know. I think you know, it's one of Ireland's leading brands of shoe. And, um, and there's nothing wrong with this shoe at all. You know, this is a typical shoe with a large drop from the heel to the toe. There's a large amount of cushioning here. And so when you run, typically we tend to run on our heel. And these shoes are designed to facilitate that. But you can run on your forefoot in this shoe. Nothing stops you running on that way. And actually, th this is a perfectly good shoe. What, what often people will look for when they go to a shoe shop is talk about pronation and, and over-pronating. And really, you know, pronation... That, that's turning your feet in when you land. That's yeah. right. So it's, it's, people come off and say to me, look, I've got flat feet, I'm wearing orthotics, or I'm over-pronating. And look, the shoe shop's job is to, is to put you into one of their shoes that they have for sale, but it advises you appropriately. But it's really not about overpronation. Pronation is normal. You have to roll your foot inwards to create movement. You have to be able to push with your hip muscles and your bottom bottom muscles to move you forwards. 
And so actually pronation is normal. It's not about overpronation. So Andy, in summary, does this mean it doesn't really matter which shoe you choose to run with? You just need to know how Absolutely. to run properly. The shoe's really fine tuning. You learn how to run properly, you prevent the risk or you reduce the risk of injury and you can run much more efficiently. The shoe's really a little bit like the tracking on a car. Once the tires are inflated and you've got a, you know, a normal, healthy, fit new tire, then the tracking, so a specialist shoe shop at that point can advise you really how to fine tune things. And any of these shoes are, are suitable. Barefoot running has a real role to play as part of that running training. Being able to feel where you are on the ground is a good thing and actually the muscle feedback is fantastic. But really, to take someone who's typically not running a huge amount, suddenly running and put them into a barefoot running shoe exposes them to injury. You're looking for trouble. Listen, Andy, thank you very much indeed for coming in this morning.